Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns Porter. Soon it'll just be Porter doing a transition thing here. Transition time. Um, <laughs> um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is Commission's weekly online event, uh, webinar, webcast, online show. Um, we're here live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, but if you are unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and we post it to our um, website, and I'll show you where that is at the end of today's show. We post a recording of the show to our YouTube account. Um, if there's any slides, as there is with today's show, um, those will be included as well, so you can look at them afterwards. And um, any links that are mentioned, any websites that are mentioned, um, we'll have collected into our delicious accounts. So you have that all available in one, one place afterwards. Um, both the show and the, the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So if you see any topics that might be of interest to you, to uh, other colleagues of yours, friends, family, neighbors, whoever, <laughs> um, that might be interested in something we're doing here, um, let them know. Share our websites, share our info with them. Um, we're happy to have them on, um, come and, and join us and watch all the recordings. Um, we do a mixture of things here on the show, book reviews, interviews, um, any training sessions, kind of demos of services and products. Basically, our only criteria is library related, something libraries are doing, something they're interested in, um, history of libraries, stuff, books out there, um, anything that a library can be involved in. And some of our topics can get a little... Um, Outside the box thinking, maybe you might think, why is that anything to do with this? And why is it on the show? But stick with us. They always end up having something to do with libraries. That's uh -huh. my <laughs> only real criteria about all this. <laughs> and you get suggestions so, from librarians in the field, too, oh, yeah. about mm -hmm. programs. Yeah. So that's always fun so, to do something because somebody brings it up. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. We And we have, um, obviously, we do things from the Mexico Library Commission staff, as we have today. Um, but we also bring in guest speakers um, from around Nebraska and outside the state, too. Um, I'm always scoping out and seeing what's going on in other areas of the country, what conferences um, people are presenting on, what kind of topics. So, yeah. And I do get people that contact me and say, I have an idea for a show, um, or I'd like you to explain more about this thing that I don't know about. And sometimes I say, well, you know, you're doing that, so you should be on the show. So, you never so, know what happened if you contact me. You it could end up anywhere you Having think. to be one of our presenters. Um, but today, like I said, we actually have a mixture, I should have said. Um, we have library commission staff, and we have some um, librarians out in the field here in Nebraska that are on remotely with us this morning. Um, today we're talking about the our Nebraska's Library Internship Grant Program, which is a thing we've been doing for quite a few years, mm -hmm. on and off. And um, whenever we have money, we like to have it we do. interns. <laughs> That's the key, yeah. And um, Mary Jo Ryan and uh, Joanne McManus are here from the Library Commission um, with me, and they're going to tell all about the program. And then on the line, as I said, we've got four librarians from across Nebraska that have been involved in it, both from the um, Library bringing in the intern and people who are actual interns and now have gone on and actually been success stories and have jobs. And we'll introduce them as we get to them um, throughout the show. So I'll just hand over to you guys. Um, great. And great. Joanne to take it away. Thank you, Krista. Mm -hmm. Joanne, you want to start by talking about some of the goals of the project or? I will. I mean, um, and I uh, also want to talk about our funding source. We do are using. Uh, funds from our Library Services and Technology Act funds through IMLS, and um, so we always want to thank them as yes, well. Yes, absolutely. But we do have goals, and these pretty much are the same goals that we've had throughout our internship grants. We do want uh, to involve our students in real library work and introduce them to the varied and exciting work of libraries. And uh, even though they can be doing some mundane tasks, too, we do we want to make it exciting, so certainly if we're going to be using this as a recruitment tool, we would like uh, libraries to give them some projects that they can really sink their teeth into. Um, I mentioned recruitment tool. I think this is a very good way to introduce uh, students to the work of libraries and give them a flavor of how this really can be a viable career opportunity for them. And so while they're in your libraries, make sure they have um, an understanding of the library operations, the role of technology, um, you know, budgets. Even though they might not be working in all of those areas or even many of those areas, you do want to give them an overview. And, um, and that's one of our goals. And then, of course, uh, to provide students with financial assistance, obviously, 
uh, it's hard to get them to work for free. <laughs> and so obviously the grants will go far to, to give them a salary when they're there at the library. So the basics for uh, the grant program, um, a library or branch of a library can get up to $1,000 and we are committing $25,000 statewide. And uh, what's nice about this particular grant is that no matching funds are required. So you can get an intern, uh, pay them the $1,000 for their work there. Uh, if you want to have them work longer and throw in some extra money, you can, but that certainly isn't required. And we don't, even if you do want to pay them more than the $1,000, we don't even ask that in the in the grant application. So we do not look at that at all in our criteria. Uh, it does need to be accredited public library. So if you're a public library in Nebraska and are not credited, accredited, uh, you do not qualify. However, that's a good reason to get accredited and there's a lot of other good reasons uh, to be accredited as well. And also, we really do want to encourage libraries that are not accredited, either that are public and not accredited or that are college libraries or school libraries, you can partner with a public library that is accredited. Mm -hmm. um, you would both have to work together on the plan mm -hmm. and both have to work together with the intern, but the intern could work in more than one facility. The applicant has to be an accredited public library. That's correct. And the funding goes towards either stipends uh, that you give directly to the intern or wages and, uh, and of course, the benefits or taxes that go along with that if uh, you actually hire the intern. Most, uh, uh, more than half of our libraries do it through a, a stipend, so you don't have to worry about those taxes. But those, that funding is not to be spent on any other things other than money that is going directly to the intern. Uh, we do have uh, eligible interns outlined in our, um, on our website. And really, it does have to be either high school or college students. And that could be grads or undergrads. Uh, but it does have to be students, uh, high school or higher. They, uh, and then there's some stipulations. You cannot, uh, interns that are paid through this grant can never be, have been employed by a library before or never interned at a library. However, if they are your current or past volunteers or other um, libraries, they, in, they were a volunteer at other libraries, there's no restrictions again. And this is probably a good time to say that, uh, to remind you all that if you have questions as we're talking or as our other presenters, our remote presenters are talking, please just feel free to type right in the chat box because mm -hmm. we, Krista is monitoring that so we can interrupt and, and deal with questions right at the time when you're interested in finding out oh. some information. Yeah, yeah. anything yeah. you want to know more about any of these rules, restrictions, guidelines. Yeah. 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 And it was funny, I was talking to one of our libraries this year after her experience and she said that their intern was so good that they are going to hire their intern uh, again next summer and so they won't be getting a grant because obviously our grant won't be able to pay for their intern since they were already an intern. And I says, well that's fine that you hire that intern back but why not still get a grant and bring on another intern. And yeah. and get somebody else trained. Yeah, beautiful. That's a huge success story, isn't it? Right. Our deadline is December 21st. So you have close to two months left to apply. So definitely get that on your calendar if you're interested. Uh, we will make our grant uh, an award announcement on February 2nd. So you'll find out. February 10th. Excuse me, February 10th. <laughs> I'm just so, hopping right in. <laughs> so you'll find out fairly soon. And then on March 8th, put that on your calendar if you're applying. We will have another uh, webinar. And this is really going to be talking more about successful internships, what to do to actually get ready for that internship. So tune into that as well. And then as far as the internship window, if you get a grant, those interns could be in your library working anytime as early as March 15th of the coming year and as late as November 30th. So you have quite a window uh, to have your intern come in. A lot of people get them over the summer, 
Um, but really, if you're working on a special project, maybe summer might not be mm -hmm. the best time because yeah. that is a busy time for you. <clears throat> um, we do want to mention briefly the expectations of the library. It's the library staff that actually recruits and selects the interns. We don't say, here's an intern for you. Obviously, if we hear of someone who's interested, we'll pass that name along. But really, that is uh, the library's duty. You need to provide an orientation to library work that's very broad. So even though that intern may be only working in one or two areas, you still want to give them uh, an orientation that tells them a little bit about everything that goes on in the library. Obviously, the intern supervisor is going to be assigning and overseeing those tasks and duties. Again, it can be a wide range of duties or very specific tasks. You need to track the intern's hours and activities, um, make sure you complete the assessments in a timely manner, and then at the very end, the library director needs to attest to how the grant funds were expended, because uh, eventually our auditor will come in and say, well, what they do with that $1,000? And we'll say, well, the library director said they spent it on salary. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, that's good. A, so that covers our needs. <laughs> um, we do... Um, not only does the library, the library staff uh, fill out some surveys at the end of the internship, but the interns also do uh, follow-up surveys. And so, we and I love these quotes you have here because these are fabulous, Joanne. Because these are actual things that these actual students did, and I just <laughs> I think they're fa fantastic. Right, right. And so uh, when we asked our library uh, supervisors. Uh, what are some of the things that your interns did? They, of course, sent in some great things, and we only have a few to share. Uh, but the one I like about that first one is that Anthony not only worked to understand their website, but then they taught the library. <laughs> <laughs> I so, love that. So keep that in mind. Not everything that you give to the intern has to be something that you're good at. Maybe you're not good at something, and you need some help, mm -hmm. and you can find an intern that can help you out in that way. So. Uh, but a lot of people worked on websites. Uh, Haley researched the feasibility of switching to a non-DUI uh, call system. So that was something the library didn't have time, and uh, the intern was able to do that. A lot of them um, uh, do activities. Uh, Shay planned a, and hosted a murder mystery night for the library. Um, Lila was given a task to plan uh, to start a a reading club and so she really went beyond the call of duty and came up with all kinds of facets that would go along with that. A lot of the library uh, staff, um, the interns are doing flyers and other marketing materials. Uh, Caden actually planned uh, classes for the 3D printer in the library and I think that was not only the classes were successful but it really helped the staff to learn more about that 3D printer. And then um, a lot of the uh, interns are also doing classes uh, on computer classes and other things. Oh, there's more. Good. Oh, there is more, yes. Oh, um, read it before it becomes a movie display. Yeah, displays oh, nice. and exhibits. That's mm -hmm. something that students can sometimes really dig their teeth into. Right. Right. Um, and then Allie had done a genealogy introduction workshop to, student, to students who are in grades two through five. Uh, Riley worked on some STEM, STEM activities every Saturday morning for the youth in the special reading program. Um, Haley also organized two uh, fun programs, Hula Hoop Games and Nursery Rhyme Olympics. And sometimes mm -hmm. these, the students, since they're younger than your typical librarian out there, really get into those fun activities with mm -hmm. kids. Uh, Colt researched makerspaces and actually recommended some purchases, and they actually made those purchases. So, uh, And he also came up with a Pokemon Go Safari, Safari Walk. And, of course, that yeah. was new and interesting and maybe something mm -hmm. that the librarian wouldn't have thought of because, obviously, the kids are following those type of things. Right. And and maybe not necessarily adults. That's great. And um, and then use them for things that just come up, for instance. I just uh, love this one. I mean, here it is, the summer reading program presenter didn't show up. Here this student steps in and fix, 
fixes something and puts something together and figures out what to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And great. And probably the library staff wouldn't have had time. They would to, be too busy to switch gears and think of something because you're wearing, you know, you're working with all kinds of customers, and so it's nice having that extra person that can maybe come up with a great idea at the last minute. Um, I really liked um, what they did in one community where she came up with a couple of programs for summer reading and one was an actual, they used historical material that was found in the library, but they actually did field trips around town and they wow. interviewed people in the community and um, and I just it was just something that I thought was very interesting. And a lot of them are using the interns uh, on youth programming, and that's a very good fit for most of those interns. And, and I think it's important what the, this person says here is that they're good role models for youth volunteers. Right. We've seen a lot in the marketing area. Uh, we had a bi-weekly flyer, um, a new bi-monthly newsletter, um, again, another activity, a neighborhood scavenger hunt, and this was for the homeschool book club. Yeah, so that's interesting to kind of think about when you're thinking about your student that you want to have a, a student intern, think about what target audiences you might want that student intern to work with. Like I noticed in one of the previous slides, they worked with the teen advisory group. Here they're talking about working with the homeschoolers. So you might have, you might want to be thinking in terms of target audiences as well as what you want them to do. Right. So and these are the kinds of things they do, huh? Right. Wow. Here's just a bunch of, you know, a list of things that they that we've seen done. Uh, this one is just a little bit of everything. And then the next page really focuses on the technology. And uh, kids are so good with technology anymore that certainly if you're not on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, um, that's a good place to get uh, interns working. And even if you are, um, they kind of know what the kids are interested they in. They can really help you take a more planned approach to your social media because if you talk through with them about what kinds of things you maybe want to do each week of their internship, they can have a planned approach for how they'll use social media each week to promote and share information about different things. Instead of, I see a lot of social media where there's a lot of the same thing every week. Because that's what we're thinking about. We're thinking about the new books in the library. So on the social media, new books in the library, new books in the library. That's great. But these young people can help us think about what else to plan each week and what other activities we might want mm -hmm. to highlight. Mm -hmm. Now, the application is very similar. Uh, it's actually exactly like last time, other than the dates have been changed. Um, so we're asking in that grant application, we're asking for uh, the reason of participation, your underlying meeting or opportunity in your library, why you need an intern, um, the anticipated benefits to the student, the library, and the community. So we're looking for all of that. Um, we ask you to actually list your projects and activities that you're going to ask your intern to do. And while it is uh, we know that there is a lot of work that needs to be done uh, that isn't so fun, like um, cleaning and organizing and whatnot. Um, we are looking for projects and activities that really give them a good experience because since we're using this as a recruiting tool, um, if they spent the whole summer cleaning the library, that's probably not going to score very well. <laughs> Not that it doesn't have to be done. <laughs> Just a variety of tasks, and some of them we'd like them to be pretty substantive. Right. Uh, we do ask you to describe your preliminary orientation plan because we would like to see that you are going to orient them to the work of the library. And we do ask that you put in a tentative timeline when you think you're going to do recruiting. Uh, key milestones, you know, are you hiring them for the summer? Now, we do stress that that's a tentative timeline. Certainly, after you get your grant, you don't have to say, oh, gee, I said we were going to hire somebody in May and have them start working on June 1st, and now because of this, we want to do it at a different time. Yeah. That is really not a problem. We just want to have you give that some thought in advance. 
And I'm going to show you real quick where you can find that information if you want to go back and go through everything again that we're talking about. Here's the Library Commission website, which I know you're familiar with, nlc.nebraska.gov. We go over here to Now Hiring at Your Library, Jobs, Careers, Now Hiring. And then right across here on the flyout menu, you can see Internships. Let's go there. And that's where you'll find uh, all the information that we're talking about all the dates, all the deadlines, how to hook up with the application forms, all that kind of mm -hmm. thing. And, that, and the grant application is on there as well. Right. And if you have any trouble using that grant application, just give me an email and, uh, and we'll get something else out to you that will work for you. Uh, it is a competitive process, so we do read the applications and we score them. So certainly uh, keep that in mind as you're filling out that application. Uh, we do get more applications in than we have funds, so it is a competitive process. Um, and on our website, it, it has all these uh, things that we are looking for and that we use as criteria. We do encourage partnership projects, so if you have a partnership project with schools, academic, or others, other public libraries or special libraries, we encourage that. And um, there's even an opportunity, if you're planning any field trips, to list those in your application as well. And it's kind of nice to expose the interns to um, other types of libraries, or if you're a real small library, that maybe visit a larger library, or they can see maybe some other things that are happening um, at, a, at some libraries that might not be happening at yours. We've gotten good feedback from the interns on their uh, review reviews of the uh, travels and and uh, field trips. They really have enjoyed that. I want to point out um, that when we talk about in the needs of the library, when we talk about anticipated benefits and outcomes of the internship, we're talking about not just the benefit to the library, not just the need of the library, but benefit to the intern, benefit to the community, needs of the library, needs of the community as well. So how does this fit with your, for example, the needs that you identified with your strategic planning process. That would be very important information for us. Or um, what kind of benefits do you think will, will uh, the community will have based on the work that your intern's gonna do? Mm -hmm. Right, and on all the questions in uh, the grant application, sometimes you answer questions one and two, and then when you get to three, you go, well, I really already answered that in two. If, if it's asking you something in that on that third page, you might want to, even though you said it before, you might want to say it again because if all the reviewers are looking to score that thing by looking at that question, they might have forgotten that you just said a little bit about that on the page. Now, we do try to find that in your applications, but um, make it easy for the <laughs> reviewers to give you points since they are looking at lots of applications at the same time. All right. Um, here is the website that Mary Jo just showed you, and, and that web page has all of this information, the overviews, the goals, the eligible applicants, the grant amounts, uh, past recipients. So certainly, if you have any questions, you probably can get it answered by looking at that web page. But certainly, if you have questions and you can't find the answer, give us a call. Um, we do have, before we go on to okay. a, a question that came in, and I think you did mention, uh, someone wants to know if you can, re someone had trouble with their audio at the very beginning, they were kind of popping in and out. Oh. I don't know if you could review um, how the money can be used, if that was something that was... Sure, that's in the, the beginning. beginning. Yeah, the very beginning. Right. Uh, the funds can only be used to actually pay the intern. So either providing the intern with a stipend, or uh, a salary and associated taxes that go along with that. So if you are doing a field trip, it can unfortunately it cannot be used for you know the travel expenses. Or if you that. had to buy um, equipment or things like the ones that did the, the maker spaces and the actual mm -hmm. you know robots right. and whatnot, the money can go for that. Mm -hmm. That's materials correct, right? and equipment yes. just for the, yeah, the it's, person. It's yeah. only a thousand dollars, so that's yeah. not a lot of money. And so if you really want to have time with that intern, mm -hmm. um, it's 
really goes directly to that intern, or mm -hmm. if you're doing a salary and need to withhold taxes, then you can spend it on that a as lot well. towards that. Yeah. So yeah. it's very clear here in this part of the website about the fact that you get a certain amount of money, no matching funds are required, and it can only be used for direct okay. funds to the intern. Although you can do it whatever way works best in your community, either as a stipend or you can actually put them on salary if you if that works better for you. Mm -hmm. Whatever works best in your community. Uh -huh. All right, thank you. And, and we do have our speakers coming up, but after our speakers, if we have time, um, we do have slides on great uh, uh, survey results and stats from our 2016 mm -hmm. uh, program, quotes from other librarians, and quotes from interns as well. But, uh, but now we're going to uh, turn it over to our uh, guest speakers because we want to make sure we don't run out of time and be because we do want to hear from them. The first one is Karen Drevo. She's the Youth Services Librarian at the Norfolk Public Library. Karen, are you there? I am. Good morning. Um, Good morning, Karen. We're having a little bit of audio problem. Okay, can you hear me? I can. Um, You've yeah, got you a can. little echo. It's, it's just, um, are you, I can't remember, do you have a headset microphone or? No. Desk, is it built into the computer? Well, we can hear you. It's just plugged into the computer. Okay. Yeah, uh, it is noisy out here. I know I'm out at my desk. I'm sorry, but it's okay. we had laptop this morning. <laughs> You're okay. Go so, ahead. Okay. Well, last year, we targeted, I'll talk first about um, our intern application and interview process that we used. What I did was I contacted the guidance counselors at our three local high schools and told them that we were looking for young adults ages 16 to 18 who were considering a library career and asked them to steer any students that they knew uh, fit that criteria our direction. And uh, we had about 10 students uh, who filled out applications. We had applications here at the library that they could pick up. And of the applicants, we selected uh, four to interview. And um, it was for, I think, every one of the students that we interviewed or that I interviewed. It was the first time they had ever interviewed for anything, and so it was a uh, good experience for them. And um, we selected a young woman who was 16 at the time from one of our local high schools. She had indicated strongly in her application that she is interested uh, in a library career, and that she also had a strong desire to return to Northeast Nebraska when she completes her uh, education. So that, that excited us. And um, she turned out to be the best for us. In fact, um, she did such amazing work for us and was just such a great person that I believe this summer we are going to have an opening of, uh, one of our long-time is it's not likely to return this next summer. And um, we would hire our past intern in a heartbeat to come work for us next summer if that's the way things pan out. Well, that's um, great, isn't it? It is. It is. Very excited. And and hopefully we get another intern for next summer. It would be great to have a past intern working for us for the intern to uh, see and uh, share experiences with as well. Now, a couple, it, we learned that our intern was very interested in sports and very athletic. So we, on Friday mornings, during the summer here at the library, we have our Friday morning fun activity, and we have anywhere from two to three hundred or more people opportunities that we have on Friday mornings. So she indicated she had a strong interest in um, helping with that. So I had found a few things on, on Pinterest 
um, about organizing hula hoop games and nursery Olympics. So she was in charge of two of our Friday morning programs, and we had over 300 show up for the hula hoop games. Okay, great. Wow. <laughs> and we had them. Um, we had it organized to be completely outside, and she organized all the games and had people uh, assigned to work the games and uh, a way to keep the flow going, and and it worked out great. Did you have to now, buy 300 hula hoops? We bought a ton of hula hoops. Oh my <laughs> but there were all kinds of things that they do with them, different activities where they would be Try to get them inside the hula hoop. Different. All each station. I think there were about a dozen stations that she had set up where they could do something different at each one with the hula hoops. And then um, we had a day, a Friday morning of nursery rhyme Olympics, where we had a diddle diddle dumpling sock race, we had Jack and Jill water relay, a black black, black sheep slap race, and and several other. Things. And just to show what race under fire this young lady had, the morning this was scheduled to be, it was raining outside. So we had to go to the library and restage everything to be inside the library the best we could. And also, we had several employees who were gone that day. So we went to the library on that, but she handled it all. Uh, just great, and everybody had a good time. And so that was very successful, and I think it really gave a boost to her confidence to see that she could plan these things and that all these people would come out and participate and enjoy them. So that, that was wonderful to see. Um, also, I want to talk just a little bit about how we had our time scheduled. What I did was I worked with our circulation department, our reference department, um, our technical services, uh, our admin department, and outreach to schedule specific times where she um, would have time in each one of those departments to learn about the library and what goes on. And, um, she even got to go out with her outreach librarian to uh, and help her select and take items out to people in assisted living in nursing homes or in their own homes who can't get out. And uh, I could t she really was amazed by that experience. And it was very and she also obviously spent a lot of time in our youth services department with those programs and helping people reading. And also our literature festival. That sounds great, um, Karen. Thank yeah. you. And and you know, Karen, um, I I'm not sure if it was you who mentioned it, but I know as I was reading these comments from the librarians, uh, it was a lot of them who did have had them work with other staff. Um, really thought that was very good, and that it even kind of to those other staff to take another look at what they're doing because if they're showing it off to an intern mm -hmm. then they are really right. looking at what they're doing and maybe you had mentioned that Karen mm -hmm. and some of the others who only really worked with one staff did say that in the future they think they're going to have them work with more than one staff so um, I know she had no idea really what at all goes on uh, behind the scenes at the library, and uh, I, I think it made her all the more interested in a library career, I hope. Uh -huh. Well, very good. Yeah, I just want to give a, a couple of key takeaways that I got from what Karen was saying before we move on to Sharon, but um, I thought it was really important that she talked to guidance counselors at local schools. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can have a lot of good people out there that we would never hear about, but the guidance counselors know about. So. And then I love that the student was going to return to Northeast Nebraska. That's a real plus, and I think it's important that we let our communities know that we are doing things to keep our young people in our communities. Mm -hmm. And I loved that Karen said they're planning to apply again. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Karen. Yeah, thank you. 
Okay, so our next speaker is Sherry Kasanik from uh, the Dvorak uh, Memorial Library in Wilbur. Uh, Sharon, are you there? I'm here, yes, thank you. Um, just wanted to say good morning to everybody and I guess um, what I wanted to kind of visit which, with you about was um, the pre-planning that we did when we did had already picked our intern but just the pre-planning setting up our goals and projects and kind of gave me a timeline and some idea of what to do and what to get ready before the intern started and then our intern happened to start the first week of summer reading which is always an exciting time and we spent mostly that first week just orientating um, and getting into the library activities. But as we got to know the intern and we started working with her a little bit, found out she was very creative, very artsy, craftsy, and very organized. And got to um, sit down with her and the two of us kind of redid the outline, redid the timeline and put it together so that it worked for both of us and found out that um, at home she did a little newsletter for her family that she posted in the bathroom every week so she started the same kind of a newsletter here at the library and posted it around with um, little quotes, little ideas, book reviews and people really responded well to it just something she jumped in and brought in one morning and it's been great she's still doing that for us now um, we also were in the process of doing our kids section and taking all of our books and putting them in topic bins for the, the children to find the books a little easier. Again, she jumped in with her art skills and created some labels for our bins and or helped organize that section a little better, helped us go through and pick what books went where, that type of thing. Um, and then she also helped us develop a newsletter which we did not have before and she's to this at this point is starting to expand it and improve the newsletter and it started out as a bi-monthly newsletter and is now going to a monthly newsletter which has been uh, really exciting and that was one of my goals and one of my um, objectives when we looked into getting an internship. Um, Bridget is um, uh, this year is a high school junior and is continuing to work part-time. She comes in after school and on weekends and um, still working on some of the projects that we were working on this summer that didn't get completed. We um, were updating a lot of barcodes and our accelerator reader um, information in our books. So she's been still working on a lot of those kind of things. Um, I think one of the, the neatest things I found with the internship besides getting a lot of things done that I could not have done by myself this summer was um, we were working on a project and visiting about high, you know, high school and what she wanted to do when she went to college and, and she said, you know, I wanted to go into marketing and graphic arts but she said, I'm kind of thinking about this library thing and mm -hmm. that was really exciting to me that she had put that on her her possible occupations in the future and even now when she's in here she'll say where do you go or what do you do to be a librarian and so we'll talk about some of those options which has been kind of a neat neat uh, byproduct of the whole internship so. and it's a lot easier to talk about that now isn't it with all these online programs so mm -hmm. that students can start getting their library uh, credentials by doing an online program through the co community colleges or um, they can work on online classes on a master's degree. It's just really nice to know we have that option now. Well, and she's as she's looking at colleges, you know, she'll come in and she'll say, do you know they have a library program here? And she said, what other colleges could I go to and work, um, you know, through those four years? And so we've been kind of doing a little research as to what colleges offer those programs. And I have a daughter who is a vice president at South Dakota State University and I was visiting with her about it and she said, you know, I'm going to talk to our curriculum department. It can't be that hard to add that kind of a program to our, um, you know, for our students. So I think it's not only working with um, the colleges that provide it, but maybe visiting with some that don't because I don't think it's a hard program to get started and um, maybe something we can look at in the future. Well, and how cool if this young person were to do a dual marketing and library uh, degree because 
wouldn't that be a terrific set of skills to have both those skills as you go out into library work? And that's something exactly. you need in libraries. Yeah. Wouldn't that be fabulous? Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of skills needed, the technology part. So, I mean, mm -hmm. there's just a lot of combinations that people could go with. And it's kind of fun to watch that internship develop over the summer and get some confidence in what she's doing and take hold of some of the activities and programs. That's, well, that was real fun. Mm -hmm. And it was nice that you... Um, you know, now have a, a part-time employee out of the deal, too. Boy, no kidding. That was one of my takeaways was that she, she was able to transition to be a part-time employee. That's fantastic. I also like that you mentioned that you did good planning in advance, you pre-planned the timeline, but you were able to adjust. When the person came on, you were able to adjust your timeline based on their skills and what needed to be done when and the first week of summer reading program and, you know, what all those things affect all the good pre-planning we do. So thanks for reminding us that that's an important part of planning. Yes, and we do get a lot of comments from the supervisors saying that it was really important to find out what the student really enjoyed doing and what their skills were. Because then you could adjust around those skills and, and interests and get a lot better product if they're working on something that they're good at. And just to remind uh, the attendees that Sharon and Karen are still on the line. So if you have questions for them, please do just type them right in the chat box and we'll get them back up here to answer questions. Thank you, Sharon. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, we're going to switch over to Maggie Peterson. She's the outreach specialist at uh, who works for the Omaha Public Library. She's actually housed at UNO's Community Engagement Center for working for the OPL. And she interned, uh, she had an internship through this grant program at the Miller Branch back in 2012. So let's get your perspective, Maggie. And welcome to the world of libraries. <laughs> <laughs> I'm liking it so far. Um, yeah, so I started. Oh, Maggie, we're going to have to have you turn up. We can't hear you. Can you get a little closer to your microphone? Can you hear me now? You're still very quiet. I am on a Mac, so it's impossible to tell where the microphone actually is. Oh, yes. there. Oh, there. That's better. Now you're good. Yeah. Right you okay. Okay. <laughs> I found it. It's not where you'd expect it to be. Okay. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I had my uh, I had my internship in 2012, um, and actually the round that I did, uh, they, there wasn't the requirement to still be a student. I had actually graduated college and was looking to get my master's, but I was kind of dragging my feet a little bit. I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. I had uh, I bachelor's degrees in political science and English, and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I was kind of wallowing in the world of freelance writing and bartending. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, so, um, but uh, my grandma uh, was actually a librarian for Dana College for decades. She retired from there. Um, so librarianship was always something I had kind of in the back of my mind, but I hadn't really given it serious thought. Um, and one day when I was on my lunch break at one of those jobs, a, uh, I was on Facebook and uh, the little thing popped up that said OPL was going to be hiring interns. I just really quickly just filled it out, just thought, well, why not? And then I actually got a call back and um, I ended up getting the internship, which was, I, I, in all seriousness, probably one of the best things that's ever happened. Um, interning at Millard was wonderful. I was with Melanie Webb, um, one of the teen librarians, um, and I was able to spend a lot of time helping Plan teen programs, which was uh, terrifying from the outset because teenagers, if you aren't used to them, can feel terrifying. But um, once I was actually in there, it was so fun and, and so rewarding. Um, with my English degree, I was able to help plan a writer's group. Um, and then uh, just kind of do, doing general teen programs, doing some talent shows, some crafts, um, helping do presenters and getting kind of used to that uh, uh, aspect of the library, but then also a lot of um, desk work and just the, the inner working. So they were all things I had never been exposed to before because I, I had never done any kind of library work, but I was really surprised how much I enjoyed it and how much I really liked it. And when my internship was up at the end of July, I also worked over the um, summer reading program. Um, right about the time it was wrapping up, the OPL had a uh, 
10 hour a week position for somebody to come help do their after school club that would meet at five different OPS schools. And I thought, well, why not? And I kind of joked that I just slowly broke down their will over time until they made me a full time employee. But so it's like I started at 10 hours and then we did this year and then I did this year. And so I, I kind of just kind of worked my, my way up doing other little jobs. But um, I'm hoping to actually start. I'm not actually a librarian yet. Um, I'm hoping to start a uh, master's in the fall. Um, but it's, it's, definitely open up a world I, I don't think I would have gotten into if I hadn't had that internship. I, I don't know if I would have found librarianship on my own if I hadn't had this experience. Oh, that's great, Maggie. Well, we do encourage you to go ahead and get your master's degree. I will. <laughs> I'm definitely doing it. It will open up lots of doors for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much. Uh, our next uh, speaker is Laura uh, Trinan with and uh, she works at W. Dale Clark, which is the main branch at Omaha Public Library, and she interned at that same library. So, Laura? Hi, uh, good morning. Um, yeah, so like you were saying, I interned at the W. Dale Clark branch. Um, I was actually in the same class as Maggie, uh, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I, I had also uh, graduated college already uh, with a British literature degree. Um, I was just kind of working some full-time jobs, wasn't sure where to go, and then I thought I would take, um, there's a program through the Missouri, uh, Mizzou program where you can take like one or two classes of library school before you're actually in the program. Uh, and so when one of those classes I was taking, um, two of the Omaha Public Library staff came into our class and actually talked about this internship program. So. Um, I thought it was a good way to see if I actually really wanted to work in a library. Um, so I applied and I got in. Um, and then, so interning at the W. Dell Clark branch, I actually was upstairs um, on the fourth floor with the administration department. Um, so my experience was a little different, but um, so I worked with Sarah English and Amy Mather, who are the children's uh, outreach coordinator and the adult outreach coordinator. Um, which was nice, so I got to see, you know, if I liked working with the children department better or the adult department. Um, and turns out I'm more of a, an adult librarian type. <laughs> um, so with Amy, uh, we got to go around town um, working on SRP stuff, because I started in June. Uh, so we got to go to different um, restaurants and you know, different establishments uh, to get SRP prizes for people who were uh, going to win the reading program at the end of the summer. Um, I also worked on poll quotes. They were working on a thing for Twitter, so I sat down with Edith Wharton's um, Age of Innocence, and I worked on some poll quotes so we could put on our Twitter feed, which was pretty cool. Um, let's see. I... Uh, we got to go to different programs at different branches, which was really neat for me to see because I hadn't really been to a lot of the different branches. Um, so it's uh, really great to see the different programs that uh, each branch does for their own community. Um, it was a really good experience to kind of get to see and meet people and see what they do in their jobs. Um, and other than that, I did do some cleaning like you talked about earlier. <laughs> um, so some of that. Right. I also worked on um, some of the data entry for the zip codes for SRP just to kind of help get all their stuff in order. Um, and I'm happy to say, uh, I'll find out on Friday, but as long as I passed comps, I should be graduating with my library master's this December. So. Oh, congratulations, Laura. Hey. How wonderful. <laughs> what a great success story. Yeah. So um, are you working full-time now? I'm sorry, I didn't remember what Joanne said. Full-time at Omaha Public Library? Oh, sorry. Um, no, I'm a part-time library specialist just while I finish up school. Then I'll be applying for full-time. Very good. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Well, thank you all. And um, if you have any questions out there, those of you who are listening, please do type your questions right in the chat box or else raise your hand and Krista will put your mic on, on instead of having it be muted. You want to talk about some of the supervisor feedback? I do. And we have gonna, a little bit of time. And we're going to go through this relatively fast. So if you want to uh, get online and look at the at all of these a little bit more closely in the future, that'd be great. Yeah, the slides but, will be online, and you can take a look mm -hmm, at these right, in detail. Right. But um, 
On the supervisor feedback, I think one thing that always comes out is that planning is really important and then always going over those plans with your interns throughout is important as well and helpful. Um, I think we'll just go on to the next one because we got quite a few. Um, well, they mentioned technology. Everybody always mentions that the interns are great with technology usually. Right. Uh, we did talk about that non-Dewey call system. Uh, I think um, it's just really good. You know, there's so many uh, students out there with really good technology skills. And, you know, they love being on the Internet, looking things up. And so any research projects are always good for students. Yeah, and they also, I, I just clicked on to the next one, but they mentioned that one of the supervisors mentioned that they were able to use the student to help get feedback it back into the community and to the business community about what goes on in the library and what the library has as a resource. I thought mm -hmm. that was good. Mm -hmm. And what some of these quotes show is that really I think sometimes the librarian is kind of surprised at what uh, quality of students they can really get. Uh, this one says, I was surprised at how well our intern fit in. Um, you know, she wishes that all public libraries had the benefit of having a young person come on board to help out. Uh, fresh eyes, we hear that all the time. We hear it's, that all the time. It's good to have people, uh, someone else, looking at your processes. This is an intern's feedback. Oh, yes, these are interns. Um, and so many of them say it's the most enjoyable, the most, the best experience, the best job they've ever had. Um, and then, you know, it, it makes them think about what they're going to do when they go to college if they're in high school at the time. Um, and so I think that's exciting. A lot of them say this about how they really didn't know what was going on in a library and what they do for the community. You're building an advocate and that advocate will go out and tell your story in the community. Right. Again, this person was already very committed to librarianship, but now they feel they're going to be more prepared. And then we have some stats that yeah. we want to wrap. We are ending with the stats right. because we think we started with the story. Now here's some facts. Right. In the 2016 internship program, we did fund 26 libraries in total, and that uh, equated to 36 interns, uh, both Omaha and Lincoln. Uh, four branches in each of those libraries were involved. Uh, almost most of the libraries hired just a single intern for the thousand dollars, but four of them did split that thousand mm -hmm. dollars between two uh, interns. And um, you know that has some challenges because you don't have as much money for each intern, but yet you have two two eyes to look at things. So I mean, you know, keep that in mind of whether that is something that you might want to do or not. Um, of the thirty six interns, five of them were. Uh, male, 31 were female. Uh, when they answered their, each of them took uh, both a uh, an initial baseline survey and then a survey at the end, the interns, and only two had indicated that they, uh, that their current major or their expected major for college was going to be in library science. So it doesn't have, you know, you don't have to find that student that says, yes, I'm going into library science. Uh, but still, you we are know. we're recruiting them even if they don't have that in mind right now. Just like the student who is going maybe into marketing, graphic design, but maybe library science too. That would be they, a great combination. They will end up being um, advocates for your library, oh, for sure. libraries in general, even if they don't decide to go into that as their own career. Right. Sure. They'll, like um, Megan and were saying, I didn't, in one of those comments, I didn't know what libraries did. Exactly. And now they do, and they'll keep talk, talking to it to all their friends. Did you have any idea? <laughs> <laughs> and then we asked the supervisors at the end if their intern is staying on in any capacity if at their particular library. 52% said no, but 48% said yes, they are going to be continuing at the library. Uh, seven of those interns are continuing as volunteers. Another seven are either continuing as seasonal, project-specific, or on-call employees. And two are continuing as year-round part-time employees. I and think that's pretty good. I think that's that almost 50%. That's pretty right. good. Right. And then we asked the interns at the end of their uh, internship some questions. And one was, how likely are, will you pursue 
further education in the library field, and actually 79% somewhat likely or very likely. So even though only two were thinking about having a major as a library science, 79% uh, still see that they are going to be picking up some, at least some classes in, mm -hmm. that, in that field. And then we asked, how likely is it that you will apply for a library job within the next five years? And 82% said it was somewhat or very likely. So, so that's pretty good. That mm -hmm. is pretty good. You know, a lot of times they say, okay, been there, done that. But this group is not saying that. It's not <laughs> saying that. So we're happy about that. That's right. Um, we also asked them if you plan to recommend the library as a resource or a desirable place to visit more now that you have had your internship. And actually, 100% agreed with that statement that they are now, since they've had their internship, they will be recommending the library as a resource. So, you so really, that's what Kristen was talking about. So exactly. you really have built that advocacy here if 100% are saying that. We did ask to, uh, uh, we said a librarian needs to have a broad range of skills than I realized before the internship. And again, 91% were surprised. They agreed that yes, mm -hmm. um, they learned that they do need that broader range of skill than you originally imagined. I guess when you walk into a library, you see somebody checking in and out of books and you don't know what else. And you might not all realize that there's um, budgeting and social media and you name it, a librarian has to do it. So we have we are at the end of our time, but we are more than willing to stay a little longer if we have questions. So yep, it's please. not a problem, um, just because we've had 11. We start a little after 10 anyways, um, but no, we don't need to cut off at all. If anyone has any questions, comments, thoughts, um, type it into your GoToWebinar um, question section. Um, if any of our presenters there want to say something, let me know. You can either raise your hand on, in the interface, there's a little hand raising icon there, or just say, yes, I want to say something. And you might um, want to switch to the next slide just so they can uh, Write down that information of contact if they have that. Good point. Joanne is at your service. Are there any questions coming in, Krista? Nothing was coming in except that one about, you know, redoing the, the... Well, we hope you're all going to apply for an internship mm -hmm. grant. If you're not an accredited public library, keep in mind that you can partner with an accredited mm -hmm. public library. I know we did have, I believe, people from school and now someone I saw also from uh, university on listening as well. So, yeah, yeah this is, and, yeah. Yes, and they're on that web page, not only is there good information about the grant, there's also good information about internships. Just so, in general. So, right. for instance, mm -hmm. it has um, an outline of things that you would review with an intern to give them a full feel for the library. So you can use that. Uh, there's uh, connections to um, questions on what you would ask an intern in a, and this is not necessarily only for a library, library science, but oh, sure. we link to other things of what type of things to ask mm -hmm. interns. So there's a lot of good information, uh, even if you are from a, a library outside of Nebraska, yeah. that you might be able to peel off some good information on that mm -hmm. website. And we have funded in the past some partnership internships. Mm -hmm. We do give priority to partnerships because mm -hmm. we think it's a great way for, for example, a school and a public library to build the kind of collaborative work that that libraries do so well. Mm -hmm. And also another one I know was a community college and a public library had a partnership. I think they were very both very successful. So mm -hmm. All right. well while I've been chatting, it doesn't look like any urgent questions have come in. So I think Well we thank you everyone. Yeah. Thanks so much to our remote presenters, yes. our mm -hmm. former interns and our intern supervisors. Yes. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you, Karen, Sharon, Maggie, and Laura. All right, so, and thank you everyone for attending. Um, I'm going to pop over to our browser here again. 
Um, if you have any other questions, of course, contact Joanne. You've got her contact info, and all this information will be available to you after the show as well as um, Mary just said the slides and the recording will be available probably later this afternoon. Very as long good. As everything processes quickly enough. Um, I'll send you guys all the email letting you know when they're ready for you to rewatch it or um, have access to the slides again. Mm -hmm. And in the spring, we'll hear a lot more about. Um, you know, what to do to find those good interns. Yeah, yeah you guys have scheduled to do another internship related We are. March 18th, is it? March 18th, March 2017 8th. or March 8th, 2017? Um, We're going to look this up. March 8th, sorry. March 8th, 8th 2017. Yes. March 8th. Yep. So we'll be back. <laughs> so now we'll be getting in the nitty gritty of finding that great intern and, and uh, getting them hired oh, and getting yes. them working. Yep, mm -hmm. very good. Yeah. All right, so um, yes, that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, and I'm going to pop over to our Encompass Live website. As you can see there, luckily so far in the world, we seem to be the only thing calling themselves this. So still, when you just do our Google us or whatever, we come up first. So it's pretty easy to find our Encompass Live site here. Um, as you said, they will be coming back in March. It's not in the schedule yet uh, out here. We're just getting November and December dates on, but when it was, but it will be in, um, March 8th. That's already, they're already confirmed for that. So put that in your calendar if you're interested. So next week it's due space. It is. Fun. Yes. Yes. Um, next week on our show. Um, oh, and I'll, talk, I'll show you first. Our, our recordings will be right here. Um, underneath our upcoming shows is linked to our archive sessions. And this is where our, um, recordings will be, uh, this is uh, last week's. We did a thing about comic and maker cons at your library. Um, recording, slides, and a link to the website about the internships um, will be here available for you um, to access. And like I said, go to any of these other sessions we have. We have all of our recordings here going back to the very beginning of the show, which was January 2009. So wow. there's a lot. Yes. You've been doing it that long? Yes. Oh, man. It's, <laughs> how long is that? 9, 9 10, 11, 12. Uh, years, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's a long time. Uh, so next week our topic is yeah, do space. This is a uh, new um, and actually it says right here they are as of um, next week a year old. They opened up a year ago, I believe exactly November fourth was the hmm. date, but close wow. enough. Um, and so I'm having um, Rebecca Stavik, who is their executive director, on the show next week to talk about um, what they've been doing, what do space is, um, how they got started, how they, how it all um, came, where the idea came from and what they've been doing over the past year. Great. So um, if you're interested in that, sign up for that show and any of our other sessions that you see on our schedule here, you see we've got November dates in December, um, the empty ones there, I'm still filling in, I'm in negotiations with people on dates. So you'll see all those dates fill up eventually. Um, so sign up for that or any of those upcoming shows. Also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. So if you are a big Facebook user, you can pop over there and give us a like. We post uh, reminders of when a new show is coming up, when our recordings are available. Um, we post it on here. And Facebook wants me to log in, but I'm not doing that right now. I'm just showing up our page. So if you are um, big on Facebook, give us a like, and you'll hear about what's going on there. Other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you very much, Mary Thank jo, you, Krista. Joanne, everyone for coming, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you.